and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of April 2014. It is called Super Physical Helpers. We are here to learn about super physical helpers. Now, is it the helper that is super or is it the physical that's super? I don't know what I'm saying. Show must go on. Um, this lecture is a, a great one to do this month. Why? Because the Anim Gym topic is a diving catch. And I thought about I thought about what diving catch I would do, and then I realized that the helper object tutorials that I've been giving really only tell half the story. I've done you a disservice. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. Um, I've been withholding. There is more to this picture. So I'm going to fill that in right now. But um, as you know from watching the Animating with Tempo lecture, the Advanced Cartoony lecture, um, pretty much any lecture that I've used, any helper objects, they have a wide variety of application and they are ultra super helpful. That's why I call them helpers. Um, little known fact. Okay. Um, but this is going to be very, very, very interesting. I think because the most physical shots actually can use helpers like over and over and over again. I've only shown you guys what it's like to use a helper to start to block your shots or to figure out sort of like a, a, a part of, you know, timing of, of, you know, the beginning and get you there with tempo. With super physical shots like a diving catch your helper object can actually live on they can help you throughout the entire life of the shot it's very 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 exciting I wanted to mention a couple things though before we get started number one is I got a email that had some ask video mail questions um, and then another question that asked me why my workflow seems to change so much from video to video and I'm like, oh my gosh, I probably need to explain something right now. All the videos that I'm doing, this is like an abridged workflow. Why? Because if I was doing this shot for a client, you know, I would have my blocking done, you know, by, you know, early afternoon and maybe have a couple breakdowns ready to go into blocking plus by like the next day. We're talking about like eight hours of work and I need to get this kind of done in 60 to 90 minutes or I lose everyone. All right, so um, take these videos to be almost the exact same sort of like video equivalent of the Anim Gym. It's like exercise, but it's like honed exercise. It's focused exercise. So when I'm showing you a concept, whether it's exaggeration or overlap workflow or whatever, uh, I'm, I'm sort of designing and boiling down a segment of a work day that can really hopefully uh, clearly demonstrate the concept at hand and uh, my workflow doesn't change from video to video I'm just kind of getting to the meat of the of the situation there so that's that's one thing I wanted to mention other thing I wanted to mention is that I want you guys if you can to try to start following along with the video lectures the idea behind the entire site is that they are sort of in-depth hands-on lectures that um, I, I try to do things if I if I can from scratch and to sort of like jump ahead as much as I can leapfrog to the concept and uh, and that's why sometimes it looks like I'm skipping at uh, very important parts of the workflow because I'm just like rushing to get to you know whatever that moment is that I'm that I'm demonstrating but at the same time what I'm hoping is, is that sometimes you have your Maya open and you're kind of like playing around fiddling around and doing some of the same things that I'm doing I'm gonna try to keep the pace of this one sort of like that and there will be kind of clear moments where you can if you need to you can pause and sort of like catch up and then unpause and then keep on watching. I hope you do because I think that the Anim Gym paired with this kind of focused lecture is a, is a great sort of like one-two combo in terms of learning and your guys' training every month. And I'm gonna try to do more, more of these, you know, more lectures like this as well. All right, so that's kind of all the preface for this, for this uh, uh, lecture. Um, let's get into the lecture itself. So super physical helpers. 
on super physical shots, I've been lucky enough to work on some pretty super physical um, uh, stuff. I mean, the stuff we do here at Arconics, there's a lot of physical work uh, because we do mostly creature VFX for television and we do some uh, TV commercials. We do the Rumblers commercials for Mattel. And, you know, you can't get more physical than, you know, cartoon wrestle you know action figures so I mean there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on here but um, on top of that I was uh, animator on feature films and I worked mostly on creature features and specifically King Kong was it was the, the toughest thing I'd ever been a part of but I learned the most and I, I picked up helper objects back on Kong we used them extensively um, it was it was uh, you, you, we probably would not have survived if we hadn't you know at least given ourselves like a little bit of a, a leg up a little bit of a head start on the physical work that we had to do. It doesn't have to be super physical the shot that you're you're doing, but the more physical it is, the more that you are saving yourself time by using helper objects, and. Um, that's always good, right? So there's a graph. There's two graphs, like you know the linear one of how much, how many uh, helpful uh, helper objects you're you're using in your shot, and then there's like the efficiency, right? And those, so wherever those two graphs kind of like cross, like that's like the sweet spot, and you'll find where that is for your own workflow. But for me, um, in like in a shot like this, I'm gonna do the diving catch from the anim gym topic and uh, and you'll see where that where that happens so let's let's just dive right in and start getting to work here so I'm gonna use goon okay here's goon um, I love this guy and um, remember I'm not even gonna set up a camera I, I might later but uh, y y you know the point of the anim gym is to not sort of like set up like this big cinematic kind of like you know crazy shot it's actually kind of like you know chew the fat of the animation and, and, and make everything work out all right, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a helper object, and it's going to be basically the same kind of helper object that you're used to. And I like to, you know, sort of approximate like the main shape of the character. I want him to dive through the air, um, and I'm also not going to burn any shoe leather. What that means is I'm not going to spend time wasted on, you know, him like running up to the jump or, you know, flying through the air or anything. I'm just going to have him, you know, making that catch and then landing on the ground because that's the more interesting part of this as well. Um, I'm also going to work in stepped uh, preview as you can see right here and this is going to be a 48 frame long shot. Okay, just 48 frames. Now, um, let's just get to work. So I'm going to work ba basically straight ahead, okay, and uh, I'm just going to, you know, set some keys, all right. So the idea is is that he's you know basically uh, already launched through the air. I want it to be pretty plateaued. I don't know what it is about like you know nice plateaued arcs, but I just I just I just freaking love them and and uh, I I think they're great. So um, whatever I can get away with it. <clears throat> and so I'm just keying straight ahead. Now I want him to look like he's like sort of like crunching up as he comes down to the ground here. It also makes for some you know rudimentary squash and stretch on my helper object as well. Let me create a ground plane so I can just see where he's going. Okay. Um, and I want him to hit and kind of roll as well. So as you can see, I'm, I'm just playing with the scale of this to, to show that as he's rolling, he kind of... Um, goes like that and then stretches out again just a little bit of movement and then eases into that end okay all right so here is a very 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 rudimentary very easy to kind of see um, rough 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 blocking of, of, of him on the ground okay him or sorry, finishing his his catch, you know, catching it in midair, landing on the ground, and, and rolling to a to a, a stop. Right now, I could spend a lot of time kind of refining the timing of this. I already done that lecture. It's called uh, animating with tempo. Um, there is um, a lot of animating with tempo in my other lectures, so I'm not going to spend the time right now showing you again how to really massage and work the timing of this. Um, because uh, that would just be more of the same. What I'm going to say is, if, if you look at what we have so far, 
what we have is basically what we would start with if we're animating with tempo and we are concerning ourselves mostly with the timing of the character and we know that we can get our poses for free. Remember in, in animating with, with tempo that the idea is to sort of rush to this moment so that your poses which, you, which are great um, can sort of be grafted onto this really exciting timing that you spend a lot of time tweaking and massaging to be perfect. When you're doing a super physical shot, you need to think of you need to think a little bit more ahead. And so, what the concept that I'm going to show you today is that your helper object can actually help you throughout the shot. Okay. So what we're actually going to do, um, um, I had a. Uh, I had a, uh, a computer crash and I had gotten um, basically to this point um, before. So I'm just going to open that one just because um, it had um, a little bit nicer timing actually. So, you know, why not use it, right? Okay. Anyway, so, so I've opened it now and so we're, we're, we're back to where we were before the crash. Uh, but at any rate, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to use the helper object um, repeatedly. We're not going to just use it once like I showed you when you, if you wanted your character to take an arced path like through the scene. We're not going to use it once like that. Um, and then like you know just be done with it and delete it and whatever because that's good if you if all you need if the only help that you need on your shot is to just like get your character like moving smoothly in, in a circle and whatever. This is a lot better uh, of a workflow to use if you have like a super physical shot where there's a lot of sort of separate moments but separate moments that have very very different posing okay very 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 different posing so the the example that we have is perfect because he's stretched out and catching a ball and then he lands and rolls on the ground so the basic workflow we're going to use is we're going to take we're going to pose him for the beginning and we're going to use the helper object to get those keyframes on his controllers and then we're going to disconnect it and then we're going to do just a little bit of tweaking on him on his posing you know if you were using thumbnails or reference or whatever we're going to do a little bit of tweaking and then we're going to move into the next section and reconnect him in pose and which which is great because if you use your helper helper object when the character is in pose on a super physical shot then you save yourself even more posing let me let me let me so, sort of explain why if you're using helper object and all you're doing is you're connecting like the IK arms and legs and you want the character to sort of like move around like let's say like a curved like on a curved path well, what we did is we took our character and we, you know, we constrained them and then they were moving and, and whatever. And then I showed you how to, you know, set those keys on the constrained objects and then delete the helper object and then the keyframes remained. It saves you a lot of time, even on like a walk cycle, just getting like all the arms and legs pointed the right direction and moving through the scene together. It saves you a lot of time. Imagine how much more time it saves you when you have like a really crazy pose that has to go through like a lot of nonsense. Um, it saves you so much more time. But it would be really hard if you had timed the character through the whole scene in T-pose on a very physical shot with big pose changes to then go through and change the T-pose back into your 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 very physical pose change all right it's better to get it into that rough pose reconnect it to the helper let the helper help you disconnect it and then fix the posing again i'll show you what i mean okay let's let's um let's start using this um, scene as an example anyway so th this one had like a little bit nicer timing on the um on the um, helper object but it's basically the exact same thing that i just keyframed for you guys okay um uh, for the most part, all right, has it still has that nice plateau in the air, all right, and so we're only going to get through blocking, but you um, you'll see that it 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 uh, totally helps you know all the way through your animation you can imagine, 
Okay, so here I have um, my character and he is posed in the air um, on the helper object. Let's, um, let's just make a little, a little bit of an adjustment here. Okay, so we're gonna what we're gonna do? We're gonna go through the normal helper object, you know, animating with tempo um, workflow, right? So we're gonna set a key. Um, uh, we can set it before or after we um, make the constraint. Let's do it after. Doesn't matter. Uh, so we're gonna grab our helper object. We're gonna grab our world IK movers, which on this character is his hips his two arms and his two hands, okay? His arms and, and, and arms and hands, it's arms, hands and legs. Ugh, sorry. Um, so we only have five IK world controllers. His pull vectors are deactivated right now, so that's kind of a help. Anyway, so we grab our helper object, grab one of the world IK movers, go to constrain. Let's just make sure that it's maintain offset. Okay, add, deselect this. Add this to selection, hit G, that redoes the last command. Hit G, hit G, hit G. Okay, so now this object is basically moving this guy around, which is great. So now we select them all again. Okay, and what do we do? Remember, period and comma, move your keys back and forth, right? So we're going to um, we're going to hit S and then forward and then oops of course it helps if your blend parent is on with everybody so let's go back set 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 and now he's all crunched up, right? Now that scale on the um, object is kind of messing a little bit with our controls, um, but it doesn't matter. We're not going to uh, we're not going to worry about that because we're going to disconnect it actually on this keyframe. So the way we do that is we're going to go to each one of these controllers. And if you hit F in the outliner, it'll show the constraint or show the object. And we just want to expand it and then delete that parent constraint. Okay? Because we put keyframes on every single one of these controllers in world space, deleting the parent constraint only means that it won't move with the object. It does not delete the keyframes that we made. See, now it's not moving with the object, all right? But it is moving on the keyframes that we've already made, okay? It's flying through the air. So this is, this is the beginning of part where he's about to make this, you know, amazing catch, okay? I'm, I'm, I figure he's catching like a baseball or something like that. Doesn't, doesn't really, really, um, you know, uh, uh, matter for, for the purpose of this demonstration. This is really just all about kind of using helper objects in a super physical scene, not about um, weight or anything. And that kind of is, you know, a point that I want to make again about um, about good practice, which is, you know, when I'm uh, when I'm critiquing these things, and you guys are, you know, watching the stream of the uh, Anim Gym critique. I hope you're watching and paying attention to how much I kind of emphasize that every single shot has something to teach us. And if you can identify what a shot is kind of like put on earth to teach you, then you'll be in great shape. You'll be in really good shape because you're, you're kind of um, um, focus and your, 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 you know, where you choose to spend your time is going to be way more productive if you know like what uh, what there is to discover what there is to find in, in a shot okay so you'll notice that I'm just doing a little bit of extra you know just a little bit of touch up on this on these um, these poses but then it's it's been disconnected right so so here's the point that I was trying to, to, to make before 
if you look at how he's going from a it looks it looks like he's like <laughs> like a piece of tobacco in a discarded uh, a cigarette or a you know a, I don't know, like rolled up in a rug, thrown out of a window, or he's in, stuck in a burrito or something. This is a really funny, funny image. Um, if you look at the pose change that we're about to do, if I had gone ahead and just gone, you know, you know, period set, period set, period set, period set, period set, then I would have Goon standing straight up going through this entire roll right that's really really bad someone's yelling in the hallway i apologize for that okay that would be that would be really really bad why because take going back into the animation taking the time to run like all the way through the animation and and change all the controls that are on that uh, that are on the character uh to make the poses on the the already timed animation is is actually like not even a, a time savings at all you might as well have like just like keyed it from the beginning so we're going to we're going to hand pose him on this moment okay and i'm actually going to delete the scale on this just so that it doesn't mess anything up anymore and then we're going to reconnect it, okay? So let's quickly pose this out, and you'll see what I'm talking about, all right? Every time I close my eyes... I know it would be it would be good at this point before I put any keyframes on any of the other controls would be to um, select them all and just um, just put keyframes on them anyway just like that really quickly right Just hide this for a second. I want him to roll on his shoulder, right? And I'm just going to assume that at some point in between these frames, he brought his arm up, and that's how he's able to kind of roll this way. Now there is something to be said about the pivot point of the um, character and lining it up to begin with to save yourself a little bit of time. It's not e extremely necessary, but it is, um, but it is possible and will save you some time if you plan that just a little bit, a little bit ahead of time. Um, lining up that 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 pivot point. Okay. So I'm going to say that that's that's um, where we are. Okay. So what do we do normally? Right. Let's let's just pretend like this is not 
some moment like late into our animation, some moment, you know, very far into it. Let's just pretend like we just started our animation and do the exact same thing that we did before. Use the helper object to really quickly get keyframes onto our slightly, you know, lightly posed character, saving ourselves that much more time. Uh, and, you know, basically uh, giving us, our, uh, you know, a head start on the blocking here. Okay, so let's do it again. Just like we, just like we learned. Come on, here we go, everybody. Actually, that pivot is pretty darn good. Um, I didn't really plan it that way, but this one is actually looking pretty darn good. Okay, so once again, select each one of the controls. Again. I'm hitting G. Sometimes you have to be a little bit of a ninja to select the right thing. There we go. Okay, so it's all messed up right here, right? When you go back, but I already have keyframes on this on this section, so it doesn't matter, right? Once I disconnect this, my helper object won't be screwing up all that stuff back there. It'll just go back to the keyframes that I've already set. So starting right here, let's select them all again. Okay, set, 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 and then probably set right here, and I'll leave these these two to uh, to go back back on. Okay, so let's deselect the helper object. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna hit F. Every single one of these parent constraints. And once you've already selected them once and expanded your outliner, it's a lot easier to find them again, like I just did. Let me delete them. All right, let me just save my scene really quickly. If you don't mind, save your work, or you could lose it. Okay. All right, and so since that's since that's been disconnected again. The beginning part, you know, st there's my poses that I had in the beginning. Here we go. Now he goes into this pose using the helper object to get around. All right. Now I'm going to fix the pose again. That's how it goes. All right. Frame 35. Let's fix this guy. He's like a mess. have a little bit of bend in his spine. Otherwise it just doesn't look like he's lying down, does it? Yeah, see that looks more like he's lying down. Okay. Let's pretend he's got the ball. He's kind of like holding the ball to his chest or something. He's like, phew, I got it. Thank goodness. really
Okay. So something like that. Simple. Simple and easy. Okay, come back. You know what I'm about to do. Follow along at home. Okay, here we go. Helper and uh, controller. Helper controller. Helper controller. Helper controller. Helper controller. Now all the controls and the helper because the helper holds the keys. Okay, Just set all those keys. Let's go the, back to the outliner. One, two, three, four, five. Delete them. And what do you get? All right, let's take a look. Awesome. All right, let's hide the helper so you can see. Cool. All right, so what do we do now? Now is when we start getting a little bit more, a little bit more refined and start making a few more uh, timing decisions before we go into refining posing, right? Don't we want the timing to be interesting before we pose? Let's see. I think this whole end section is a little bit too slow. So let's really quickly go in to the dope sheet, into our scene summary, which is the easiest place to see anything. Or I guess I, I should say it's the easiest place to see everything. Just crunch this up a little bit. You know what it is? It's between here and here. This is not enough. This is way too much time. And this this can be a little bit later again. Let's try two frames, or one. Let's try one frame again, but between these. And this is too much time as well. Let's try that. Awesome. Okay. Now, very quickly, speed through this and take a just a quick look at where the breakdowns should go. Keep bearing in mind tempo, bearing in mind where those um, those pivotal timing choice moments are going to sort of like rear their head. And um, so let's go through and add just like, let's do like three, maybe four breakdowns. All right, that's it, okay? And then we'll, um, and then we'll see what we have. All right, clearly the first breakdown that will refine and define the timing is between this pose and this pose, right? So let's go halfway and just build the pose. We're not going to worry too much about, um, about um, how it's timing out because we will play with the timing later, right? So we'll do a halfway, we'll just do a, a straight up, you know, in between. And um, and then sort of have a play with the, with the timing afterwards. So I'm assuming like he already caught it, so maybe 
this is the moment when his hands kind of, you know, go like that. Overall, his head should be a little bit more upwards. Just in this last, last section, no. It's fine if it's forward right there, but I do want his head to be kind of upwards like that. Okay. Um, also remember this trick. See, I was just about to put the pose by hand on these, um, on these, uh, the spine. But it's a little bit easier if I turn off enable step preview, set a key, and then turn on enable step set preview to get a little bit of like a halfway mark, sort of for free. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Oops. Hold on a second. I didn't have them all selected. My bad. There we go. Right, because here they are all crunched up. Here it is straight. When it enables step preview off, it doesn't interpolate stepped, it interpolates spline. So now I turn it back on, and look, I get that that sort of that you know mechanical in between for free. It's a really quick way to get one if you want to just have like you know a normal in between. I didn't do it. I I don't recommend doing it on all of the controls at the exact same time. Um, you do want to be a little bit more thinking, a little bit more sort of intelligent about how you're doing it um, than that. Um, don't leave it entirely up to Maya, but like I just did, you know, a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, cheating, a little bit of shortcut along the way. That's fine. There's no problem with that. I said you can you can tell anybody that uh, that thinks so that uh, Kenny Roy said it's okay. Um, but for instance, like so I wouldn't do it with the arms, I wouldn't do it like the head or like the the um, the root here. But with the feet, I really see no reason why I need to really like fight the feet on what the real halfway point is between here and here. You know, kind of just let Maya do it for me. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what would be the next one? It's definitely this transition because there's not enough real compression happening. Um, he doesn't look like he, it, like this, this squash is not really happening. It's really because those legs are sort of cranking over and it's, it's creating like an arc on, on screen, okay? So let's, uh, let's work that out. Let's just do it, like again, let's just do it halfway. We can always come back. Um, remember to have that editable attitude, you know? Be, just be totally, you know, confident in yourself that you're going to be able to you know edit your way out of any problem all right he should probably be starting to bring this to his his chest a little bit you know both arms put his elbows down anyway what I really wanted to get was was these guys starting to work together. Definitely wanted him on the ground as well. We can fix his head. I just want I want his shoulder to be like a contact point so we can fix his head. Going back and forth. Just seeing just seeing um, sort of how you know how he's moving, not moving enough. If this is truly halfway, he's not moving enough here. Okay. Oops, did I mess that up? Oh yeah, I was supposed to do it right here. That's okay. Um. No, let's just continue. That's fine. Actually, you know what I should do? Let me show you what happens. See that? That's a really weak in-between. 
mostly because the hands like feel like Maya thinks the hands need to go like straight through, you know, like almost like along the ground right here. You see that? That's why you don't want to let Maya do like the entire body. Um, you know what? I'm going to give this one more frame partly because I want to be able to do a, a keyframe halfway and partly because I think it needs a more, another frame, right? Why not, right? Which means I need to fix this breakdown right here on 24. 24. Don't forget 24, Kenny. All right. Um, anyway, so where were we? All right, so that's the, okay. So let's have him. I'm doing this a little bit quickly, probably a little too quickly, but I really want to get might be a little bit might be a little too high. Now let's kind of approximate the um, the distance, right? Maybe a little bit more. Okay, these legs are distracting. The legs, I'm gonna to have to offset them timing timing wise. But I probably honestly I'd probably wait till blocking plus to do that. I know it has to happen. I'm not I'm not like super worried about it. Oops, what happened here? We've got a bad keyframe. Let me just set on everything and delete that. I don't know what that is. Here's another weird key. Right. The legs can start be str start to uh, straighten out here, though. Oh, I know what happened. I slid everything on the. That's what I did. I slid a couple keyframes on the on the torso. That's why it happened. So I definitely need to delay these legs, right? Certainly need to delay these legs. But let's take a look. Can probably delay them with the keys that I already have. Let's make the um, make the foreground leg be the one that's having a little bit of trouble catching up. I don't see any reason why this torso actually needs to crunch up that quickly.
Oops. There's a limit to things though, Kenny. You can just do whatever you want. Okay. Not bad. Okay. So let's um, let's recap what we did. Alright. Very nice. We have this loop. We can talk about it. All right, so <clears throat> much like using a helper object to block your scene or to just sort of like really just get like the really, really, really rough staging on a, a physical shot, which, which is a good place to start. Let me, let me kind of like summarize the entire summary by saying if you haven't used helper objects yet, if you haven't like explored like all 360 degrees of your your set with a character yet um, that that's step one definitely the first thing you need to do um, it's a hallmark of a amateur demo reel to have all of the characters um, I released a free video on YouTube about this um, to have all of the characters basically like walking like on 90 degree angles because it's so super easy to animate like when like you know Z is forward and you know Y is up and, and X is like left and right. It's very 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 easy um, once you have someone turn you know just a little bit and then like have to turn again and then they back up this way and they move forward you know all this all this more physical stuff really exploring the space then you start getting to what what looks like a lot more advanced control over your character and like a fearlessness they they don't have to just you know be like military turning on on 90 degree corners and and that's it so um, that's that would be first step I, I recommend you do that but when you're ready to take on a little bit more physical stuff and you want the help that helper objects can give you um, this is what you do um, you start out by creating that helper object that is going to be basically really super roughly timed with stepped keys to kind of like just get a little bit of exploration and timing and, and try to hone in on something as quick as possible that is engaging. That's all you really, really need. You get your poses, if you've done reference and thumbnails, you get your poses basically for free. By free I mean that you've worked them out and like you can pretty much there's nothing that's actually going to prevent you from getting like a super awesome pose that you've drawn, you know, into your into your rig. Unless your rig is like really rudimentary or whatever, you're pretty much going to get it. So um, that timing is is good to get to. But at any rate, rather than just using the helper object once and just like moving your character around the scene, you you attach it for like in a certain duration until there needs to be a very big pose change. Then you disconnect it by deleting those constraints, put the character into pose, and connect it again. Use the helper object over and over and over and you'll find that you'll be using helper objects a lot more often. In fact, you'll probably want to make helper objects for all of your characters, especially in something like a fight scene or you know something where there's like a really heavy amount of character interaction because there's nothing like being able to use like helper objects that that kind of like have that visceral connection and you can get to that that timing that 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 like irons in that that character into that space um, and then later when you when you when you've worked out all the big problems then go in and just like you know throw the character rig into the scene it's a lot different of a way of working than most people are used to, especially because most people, when they learn CG, they what they want to do is they think that they need to get their hands on like the best rig to do the best animation. Um, I used to be like that. I wasted probably a good solid, I'm not kidding, two years um, trying to learn how to rig and then searching around and trying to you know find rigs. And this is this is back in the 90s when there was not really anything to you know download or whatever. So it was it, you know the only the only rigs like came in books normally or um, obviously people who were working but they wouldn't send you rigs at, at all. So I was like starving for rigs and I thought like in order to make like awesome animation that was really engaging, I needed to have like the best rig in the world. Well, it's not true. Uh, at all, you can do, you can do, you know, you can bring an audience to tears with a flower sack, and I only learned that later. But um, suffice it to say, 
Um, normally, most people learn by getting a rig, and the very first thing they do is they start posing the rig. You know, they, they start, especially if they're starting like a like an epic multi-character dialogue sequence, like 11 Second Club entry, they would start posing the rig and, you know, get the two people. And, and, and I, I think all of you have been in this moment when you have your two characters and you have your dialogue loaded in Maya and you have like, you know, the start pose, you know, of one of them and the, the start pose of the other. And then you're like, okay, now, well, how, uh, how do I make this work, right? Because how do I really make them come out of this and like whatever? And then all of a sudden the character starts swimming around and everything's all messed up, right? We've all been there. I've certainly been there. Um, that was like the first, like once I finally did get at least one character rig, um, <laughs> that was like my first year of, of animating um, was just like getting everything all set up and like, you know, beautiful, brilliant camera angles and like awesome start poses. And then like, I didn't really know where, where to go from there. It's not about the start pose, um, but that's what we waste our time on. I th hope you agree when you're watching this that if we were to just keyframe this uh, straight ahead using the character controls, it would have taken us a lot longer than it ended up taking me. Okay, it would have taken a lot longer. I was working also at a sort of a slow pace, you know, hopefully that so people can um, follow along if you want to um, on, your, on your own uh, rig, uh, you know, on my at home. Um, and as well, I was narrating what I was doing when I was saying it. I, I probably could get this done in, um, you know, if I didn't have a helper object, I could probably put all these poses in maybe in 35 minutes. Um, you know, wrangling and wrestling with gimbal flip and, and the, all the problems that arise from using, you know, just the controls to get the character. If I hadn't been talking and demonstrating and, and doing it at a pace that I want you guys to follow along, I'd probably cut that in half. 15 to 20 minutes max in order to, to, to get to this point. And this is the point right here. This rough blocking is the point at which you can show a supervisor or an animation director or your lead or whoever's sitting next to you, hey, what do you think of this? And look what you have already. You have that timing that you've chosen, you know, using that helper object that you're very happy with. Um, you have uh, the character in pose going through, you know, sort of exercising that timing that you've, you've chosen for the scene. And you've got enough in there that, you know, someone can make comments and redirect it. And it's sparse enough, still editable enough, that you can make, you know, wild changes if you need to. But what a way to work, huh? What a way to work. And that, that heroic helper object, I like to keep it in the scene um, forever. Like, I don't like to delete my helper object because it kind of like, you know, you know, he was there in the beginning, you know? Why, why, why delete him? He, he, he should be there, you know, you, when you're watching your scene go across you know, the big screen in the movie theater and like, you know, the robot smashes through the building and like roars and whatever, you know, he's hidden, but there is like a, there's a cylinder right there. And like, you know, he, I, I wonder if, I wonder if, uh, if cylinders have feelings, if when the scene is rendering, like he's like sitting there and he's like looking at it all being rendered around him, he's hidden, so it's okay. And he's just like, oh wow, oh boy, oh goody. And then like, you know, this, the, the, the shot goes by on screen and, and you know, and the cylinder knows, there's a gigantic cylinder right where that robot is um, helping me out. Anyway. Um, that is all. That'll do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, package this up. I'm going to zip this up. You guys can have this scene if you'd like. You need the Goon Rig. The Goon Rig is um, for free. You just have to download it um, from the How to Cheat in Maya section um, here on KennyRoy.com or you just search for Goon and um, you can um, download it. I, I, I am not allowed to uh, redistribute it um, as part of KennyRoy.com so you do have to find it in the How to Cheat in Maya section here on the site. It's easy. You can find it. Um, or actually, maybe I did get permission. Hold on. Bear with me. I'm just going to really quickly check and see if I did get permission because it might be in the download section. Downloads. No, I don't have it. Okay, whatever. It don't matter. It don't matter. Okay, um, this was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, remember, you can uh, direct the resources here on KennyWood.com by submitting your idea for a lecture. Uh, in the future, on the resource wish list forum, uh, this is very uh, uh, tied to the Anim Gym, which is the monthly animation exercises here on KennyWood.com. It's free to participate. Members of KennyWood.com get a free, lec or a free critique 
at the end of the month, and um, the work has just been steadily improving there. Check it out. It's in the forums in the Anim Gym. Uh, I'm Kenny Roy. Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck with your animation. And as always, rock on.